to my YouTube channel. <laughs> That's it. Welcome back. Bye. <laughs> Hello friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. I mostly just really wanted to play with these vinyl sheets, so I'm going to show you a few different ways that you can use them. This is more of a kind of inspiration video. We're going to be using all of these beautiful new floral sheets from Flynn Sisters Supply Shop. These were all just released in a pack on the website. They will be restocked, I believe, when the next pack launches. So keep your eye on the website. I will link the website down in the description box for you, along with the discount code. So if you got this pack, you are lucky because these are beautiful patterns. So we have five different floral patterns. And in this video, I'm going to use all five of them. We're gonna do five different cup designs. So I hope you're ready. <laughs> I just was so excited to use these. I couldn't pick just one to do in a video, so I decided to just go for it and do all five and make five different cups. I'll show you these a little bit more up close, obviously, as we work with them, but just to go over them quickly. So the first pattern we have is Courage, which is a really pretty, like, bright white. And then we have Empower, which is kind of dark and moody. Same with Self Love. Self Love is also kind of a dark and, like, moody, romantic floral and then we have my favorite this is marvelous it's got a really pretty like velvety turquoise background I really love it and then finally we have bloom this is a really pretty bright spring orangey pink and then with the pack you get a decal sheet and each decal coordinates with one of the patterns these are all printed with white ink so they will pop on the backgrounds you guys can see it's got the white ink behind it so excited to use these i really hope you guys enjoy this video i'll have everything i'm using linked down below in the description box of course and let me know what your favorite of these five cups that we are going to make in this video is down below in the comments i'm interested to hear what your favorite is i know what my favorite is but i want to know which one is your favorite okay i think that's it i hope you guys like the video let's go tumbler design we are going to work on is this big boy. This is a 40 ounce skinny straight mug from Craft Haven and we're going to use the marvelous pattern on this tumbler. Full sheet of vinyl is going to fit on this cup almost. I love this pattern so much I didn't want to cut too much of it away when I wrapped it around the cup so I picked the biggest cup that I had and we are going to wrap this entire cup with the full sheet of vinyl. Before we start wrapping, I do want to cut away all of this white excess from each side so that we are only wrapping the tumbler, of course, with the vinyl. I'm going to use my paper trimmer here to make sure that I cut straight because I don't trust my own hands to do it. Now, when I wrap this around my tumbler, I want the seam to be in line with the handle. So I'm gonna measure how this will fit here. And I am gonna leave a little tiny, tiny bit at the bottom of the tumbler. We're gonna glitter the bottom later and I don't wanna worry about cutting off any excess from down there. So I'm gonna lay this just a smidgen above the like bottom edge of the cup. So once I've got that kind of measured out in place, I'm gonna take my Sharpie and I'm gonna make two little marks on the vinyl where I need to cut so that it will fit in between the handle. Okay, so you can see my little slits here or my little marks where I'm gonna make my slits. So I'm just gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut about an inch, maybe a little more than an inch slit where each of those little marks are with my Sharpie. Just two little slits like that. And I'm gonna work my vinyl into these areas with my little slits here. Once I know that those are the correct places for my handle, I'm going to cut little notches. You see how there's a little bit of like an overhang here? I'm gonna cut just like a little tiny notch, super duper small, just like that. So then it will slide right onto our handle area. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. Just a little notch. And we're gonna have some overlap in the end when we wrap the vinyl around. So if you cut these a little too big, like I think this one is a little bit too big, we'll be able to cover it, it'll be okay. So I'm just gonna slide that in just like that. 
Now we are gonna cut just a little bit of excess off from here. So the seam ends up here, but I always like a little bit of overlap in my vinyl wraps because I don't want any gapping or anything in between the vinyl. I'd rather have a little bit of overlap. So I'm gonna tape down each of these edges to my tumbler. So I'm gonna cut just this little bit of backing away. So you can see I'm keeping each of my other sections secured down to the cup to ensure that my vinyl is placed in the right way. And then I'm just gonna go through and carefully, this is the hardest area right around the handle here. I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna remove the backing. Cut it away. and then lay it back down in the same way it was laid originally. Just like that. Okay, and I made a big mistake. I didn't check to see if these were gonna lay straight. So that's my fault. We're gonna just go with it and we're gonna deal with that later. I will have to cut the excess off, but you know what? It's okay, we're just gonna go for it. With this kind of pattern, it doesn't really matter if it's perfectly straight. Ideally, I would have laid it down perfectly straight, but it's not the end of the world for patterns like this because it's not, the pattern isn't going to meet up seamlessly anyway. So it'll be okay. All right, so once I've got the full sheet of backing like kind of back together and pulled away, I'm gonna take my big squeegee. This is from the Bowen. You can find them on Etsy. If you just search the Bowen LLC, it will come up. And I'm gonna go in and just push the vinyl onto the cup and I'm pushing this backing away in the process. And before I get to this other side, I'm gonna make sure that all of this tape is gone. And I'm just gonna keep going with the vinyl until I hit the handle. And you can see it doesn't really matter that we didn't lay it straight, not a big deal. So once I've reached the handle, I'm gonna butt this vinyl up against here, as you can see, just like that. And I'm gonna cut again a little slit here on the back side of the handle, right from the bottom so that I can pull this vinyl around that edge of the handle. And then from there, I, I know I've got my overlap way over here, so I've got room. I just wanna cut a little bit around the flowers just so that it doesn't look, you know, like a straight seam line. It just kind of blends in with like the busyness of the pattern, I guess. That's totally personal preference. If you wanna just cut a straight line, go for it. Whatever is easier for you, do that. And then I'm gonna repeat the same process up at the top of the cup. I'm gonna cut right along that handle, pull that tightly. And again, my seam is gonna be right in the middle here. So I'm just gonna kind of cut around that pattern and get rid of the excess. And now finally, we have this section here. Again, we're gonna have to cut little slits or little notches where the handle is. And so I'm just gonna go in and carefully cut those along the inside of the handle, just like this, and then cut along those notches where the handle is so that we can slide this piece of vinyl through the handle. So we'll just push it right through, pull it tightly and then I'm gonna cut the excess off again right in the middle of the handle so it kind of you can see just camouflages that seam a little bit it just looks a little better in my opinion okay so here's our cup fully wrapped now before we deal with the bottom, I was trying to avoid doing that, but anyway, before we deal with the bottom, we're gonna pull this vinyl as tightly as we can up over this top rim so that we can trim off all of this excess up here first. I'm gonna take my craft knife. And 
And I'm actually gonna put a new blade on my knife. You guys know how I do with the new blades, I love them. And you'll see how much easier it is to cut off the excess with a brand new blade versus an older blade. I can really just glide my knife over this top rim and it will just cut through that vinyl like butter. You can see just cuts it like nothing. And I'm cutting this at an angle so we have a slight little line of stainless steel. And we want that to form the final seal with our epoxy. So you just want a little tiny line. It doesn't need to be anything super significant. You just wanna to start to establish that now. Make it smooth so that when you sand your cup down, you don't get those rough kind of like sanded edges. It's just a nice smooth cut line down there. So now I'm gonna fix my bottom mistake here. I'm gonna take some of this painter's tape and I'm gonna lay it on my cup here, like at my shortest point, and I'm gonna lay it as straight as I can. Not very good at laying straight lines, but I'm gonna do my best here to get this to be as straight as possible on this bottom edge. And then I'm gonna follow this tape line around the bottom to ensure that the bottom line is straight. So I'm just following the tape following that edge, making sure that I cut this as straight as possible. So I've cut that by hand and I'm gonna remove this tape and make sure that everything is straight. To my eye, it doesn't look straight. So I'm actually gonna use my cup edging tool Now this went up a little bit higher than I wanted to go initially, but that's okay. I would rather have a straight line down here than have a like wonky line and have it go down lower. So that's our finish at the bottom. We've got our finish at the top. And now we're gonna move on to the next cup. Next sheet we're gonna work with is the Empower sheet. So for this cup, we're gonna do a half split design. I've already got my cup here that has been spray painted with some maroon spray paint. I just decided to paint my cup first. You don't have to do that. Now I'm gonna speed through splitting my cup in half. I do have tutorials on my channel showing you in depth how to do that. I'll link a few down below in the description box for you so you can see that process in a little bit more detail. Now I think for this half, I want to include like all of the florals. So I'm gonna cut from this edge, I'm gonna leave a little bit of the excess here, and I'm gonna make a mark where my tape line is, a little bit past where the edge of my tape is, and that's where I'm gonna trim the vinyl down. So we'll have a little bit of each floral in our half. Okay, now when I place this on my tumbler, I want this full floral in here for sure because that's our full like image. So I'm gonna make sure that when I place this, that that is in the image, in frame here, basically. And then I'm gonna cut this piece off and I'm gonna hold on to this because we're gonna use it on the bottom of our tumbler later. So I'm just gonna cut this off as closely as I feel comfortable having a little bit of excess and we're gonna hold on to this. I think I like them this way facing up. So I'm just gonna make sure that they're still on there good. So now I've got my vinyl positioned. I'm gonna take another piece of tape and just secure one end of the vinyl to my cup like that. I'm going to pull away a little bit of this backing and then smooth the vinyl onto the tumbler. Again, I'm kind of speeding through this process. This video is very, very long already. So I will again have those videos where I go into detail on these half wraps and how to apply the vinyl and everything down below in the description box for you. And there's our half wrap right here. All right, moving into our third cup design, we're going to kind of speed through this process as well. I'm using a 20 ounce camper mug from Craft Haven for this, and I've cut my vinyl down just about maybe a little less than in half. I wanted the vinyl to go mostly up this half of the cup, as you can see. I'm gonna place it on the bottom portion of the cup and we're gonna do a waterfall glitter design on this later. So that's why I haven't cut off that white border or edge from the top of the vinyl. That's gonna be kind of a guide for me later when I go to spray paint for my glitter application. 
Now you'll notice that on this mug, I wrapped the vinyl around a little bit differently than we did in the very beginning. When I'm wrapping around just like one handle or one piece of the handle instead of both, sometimes I'll use a little bit of a different technique that just shows you that there is more than one way to do things. Moving into our next cup design, we're using a 30 ounce skinny straight tumbler from Craft Haven again, and I'm going to split it in half vertically. We've got our cup split in half here. And what I wanna do with this pattern in particular is wrap half the cup and then also have the pattern continue here. Now it would maybe be easier to wrap the whole cup in vinyl and then just carve out the section that you want for your half. But I don't know why I just didn't want to take this off the backing, you know, like I wanted to have that section. Maybe we'll put it on the bottom. So I'm going to do a little bit of a weird thing here. And we're going to have one, this diagonal section here on the top, we're going to glitter. And that's the space we don't want vinyl, obviously. So I'm just going to map that out now with my tape. I want it to be kind of steep a little bit here. So I'm going to, I want it to be a little bit larger. So I'm going to just tape that off like that. So this will all be vinyl down here. It'll just continue. That makes sense. So I'm going to trim off this taped section. This half is all vinyl and then the vinyl is going to continue here. So I'm going to get rid of this underneath where the tape line is. I'm going to try to cut straight <laughs> as straight as possible. Okay. Same on this side. I'm cutting underneath that diagonal line of tape that we just made. I'm going to use this straight line here as my guide for wrapping my vinyl. And when we get to this end, we'll make sure that we can salvage this area of the vinyl to use for the bottom. Okay, so I'm taking my vinyl and I've got a piece of tape on one end and I'm going to try my best to line up that edge of the vinyl with the edge of my tape that I've already laid down. And I'm going to lay the vinyl down with that tape. I'm going to trim off the excess from the top and save that for later. And then I'm going to basically just wrap the entire cup with vinyl the same way that I do with a full wrap. But once we get to the point where that little cutout is or that little diagonal section is, I'm going to take my scissors and I'm just going to pretty roughly just cut it out by hand. I wanted to save the vinyl as much as I could. In hindsight though, like I said earlier, it would be much, much easier to just cut the section out after you did a full wrap. Totally up to you whatever route you want to go, but as you can see here, I'm just taking my scissors and kind of following that diagonal tape line to get rid of that vinyl from there. Now I've got this little like section of vinyl that I can use for something else. So after I had all of the vinyl wrapped on the cup, I followed those tape lines again to just clean up the edges and make sure that everything was trimmed up in the right way. And then I cut off all of the excess at the seams as well. And with this pattern, thank goodness, you can't tell which side the seam is on. Everything met up really perfectly and you really have to look super close to find the seam in the vinyl, which I was so happy with. So then I finished off the top, cutting off all of the excess as usual. And now we're gonna move into our next steps. All right, so we've got all five of our cups wrapped here. For the self-love vinyl, my phone cut out and didn't film me applying it, but I just did another full wrap on this one. So we've got our half wrap split, our full wrap big boy mug, our full wrap self-love, our kind of half diagonal deal wrap, and then our 20 ounce camper mug with the bloom pattern. So now we're gonna go through and tape off and glitter each of these open areas and continue on with these designs. I'm really excited about how they're looking so far. I don't know which one I'm gonna keep for myself. <laughs> Before we get into glittering, I'm gonna tape off all of the areas that we don't wanna get any glitter on. So for our Empower pattern, I just took off the tape from the one half and replaced it over the vinyl so that we have the vinyl side half taped off and we're gonna glitter this side. 
And then the same with this one, I already taped off all of the vinyl areas. So we're gonna glitter the bottom of the tumbler and this open white section. And then with this camper mug, you can see I've done kind of an interesting tape job here. The bottom is exposed, the handle is open, and then I've got a little bit of the vinyl exposed as well. We're gonna do a waterfall pattern down the cup. So I wanna go over this white border. That's kind of my guideline. That's why I didn't cut it off. It's kind of my guideline for like where my paint will stop when I paint this. And then we'll just waterfall glitter. So a little bit of glitter we'll get in this area. And then we'll do the same glitter on the handle that we do on the bottom. I'm gonna quickly tape off the bottoms and the handle of our full wraps so that we can glitter those as well. Now with our self-love tumbler, I'm not gonna do any glitter or anything on this. I'm just gonna paint the bottom with solid black spray paint. Now for this 40 ounce skinny tumbler, I'm essentially masking off the entire thing. I don't wanna get any spray paint anywhere other than the handle and the bottom. So I'm just going to tape off around the handle and then I'm gonna wrap a sheet of scrapbook paper around the cup to protect the rest of it. You can also use saran wrap or whatever you have as long as you protect your cup from spray paint over spray, especially because we don't have any epoxy on our tumbler yet. So if we get any spray paint on our cup, it's going to be really difficult to remove it. If you would feel more comfortable doing a coat of epoxy before you add your glitter or whatever to the handle and the bottom of the cup, you absolutely can. It's just personal preference. I just like to glitter the handle when there's no epoxy on it. I find that it's a little bit easier to get smooth rather than trying to epoxy it, then glitter it, then epoxy it again. But again, totally personal preference, whatever you wanna do. Now I taped off this entire area where my handle is and I'm just gonna use a piece of scrapbook paper to mask off the rest. So all of our cup is protected except for obviously the handle and the bottom. Now for this 40 ounce skinny mug, I wanted to make a custom glitter mix for the handle and the bottom. I wanted to try and match that really pretty tone of the velvet background. So I'm gonna make a 50-50 mix, one-to-one -one ratio of Capricorn and Mr. Lomax, both from Peachy Olive Glitters. Okay, I've got my epoxy mixed up here. I am not wearing my respirator because I'm talking to you, but make sure that you wear a respirator when you are working in your area. So I'm gonna take and put a very thin layer of epoxy all over this half of my cup. Like I'm just barely dipping my finger into my cup of epoxy. I'm just making sure I have a really thin, even coat. Starting with our Empower pattern, we are going to layer Bird and Sis, both from Peachy Olive Glitters, on this side of the cup. Starting with Bird, I'm gonna go in and go kind of semi-medium handed. This is the bigger cut of the two, but they're essentially the same color. So I'm going fairly full coverage here, and then we'll fill in any of the blank spots with Sis. So Bird is the main color, and Sis is just adding a little bit of dimension. Next for our Courage pattern, we're going to layer Magdalene and Dreamer together. Magdalene is the larger cut, so we're gonna start with that. And we're only going to put this on the body of the tumbler. We're not gonna put the bare cut on the bottom, just to make it easier to get a smooth bottom 
I don't want to have to do a ton of sanding, so we're just going to do Dreamer on the bottom by itself. So there's Magdalene on the top. And Dreamer is an extra fine cut, so it's going to lay really nicely on the bottom of the cup and make it really easy for us to get a nice smooth finish down at the bottom. And then I'm also going to lay that right on top of Magdalene to fill in any gaps. There's Dreamer on the bottom. And there they are layered together. Next, for our 40 ounce big boy marvelous pattern, we're going to use that mix that we created. That's 50 50 Capricorn and Mr. Lomax. I blended those two together because I wanted to try my best to match the teal kind of velvet background that's in the pattern vinyl. And I didn't have a color that matched exactly, so. You guys know I just wanted to make my own. <laughs> and both of these are very, very fine cut glitters, which again is going to make it really easy to get a nice, smooth, even finish on both the handle and the bottom, which are some areas that are harder to get smooth with chunkier cuts. Not impossible, just a little bit harder. Nice full coverage with those colors. Now, finally, we're going to do our waterfall design on this bloom tumbler. First, I'm going to take Chantilly, which is the smallest of our three cuts, and I'm going to lay that on the bottom of our cup here. Fill up the entire bottom, as well as the handle. Now, when I'm glittering the handle, I'm paying special attention to not get this glitter onto the body of the cup if I can help it. A little bit is okay with me, but I don't want like any big clumps of this fine cut glitter being on the cup. We want the vinyl to be the main star. You know, we really wanna see as much of that vinyl as we can. For the first part of our waterfall, we're going to use Venetian, which is the larger cut of Chantilly. So we're gonna go really light at first. I have the whole side open on my shaker. And we're just going to kind of build this fade slowly and lightly. I'd rather go light-handed and have to do a couple rounds than go really heavy in and try to figure out how to take some of it away. The effect we're going for here, but we're going to bring this down pretty far, light, 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 if we can. So I've got a little bit of a rough draft going, and now I'm going to really beef up the coverage up on that area where just the stainless steel was, just where we painted. And then I'm gonna come down and start to fade this glitter. And I really want the coverage to be kind of heavier where the spray paint was, just so it doesn't look funny. But this is an iridescent, kind of like almost transparent glitter. It's not a metallic. So you can see when it goes onto the vinyl, you can still see the pattern underneath. I don't love that line there. I should have fixed that. I don't like that. Ugh. I literally spent the next 10 minutes like staring at this cup and trying to decide if I was just going to go with it and improvise or if I was going to completely start over. Now on that cup, there are a few areas where the paint line is a little too harsh for me. So I'm kind of going to go rogue here and I'm going to add in a little bit of Athena. Now if this ruins it, it ruins it, but... I'm going to add a little bit of Athena just so that we can have a little bit more of a camouflage for that harsh paint line. Because Athena is a metallic glitter, it's going to provide a lot more coverage than a transparent glitter. And I didn't even think about that. That was my mistake for sure. I'm going to go in with Goddess, which is the smaller cut of Athena. And I'm going to, again, just kind of beef up the coverage on the top here and especially underneath that handle where I made the little paint mistake. I'm glad it was under the handle and not like on the main body of the cup, but that's where we're at so far. So I did end up covering more of the vinyl than I would have liked to for sure. It'll still be a pretty design in the end. And then I'm gonna go in with Glow Stick, which is a similar color to Venetian and Chantilly. And I'm just gonna go right over all of those same spots again, just kind of bringing that 
pretty like opal color back to the front. So that's what that glitter looks like. And now I'm going to remove all of the tape and we'll see what we're working with. So in hindsight, what I would have done is not tape off anywhere except for the very bottom edge of the vinyl so I could spray paint cleanly down there, but I would have just let the spray paint go without that tape line there and maybe gone a little bit higher up with my spray paint and not painted so far down on that vinyl. So there's what it looks like with the tape removed. So you can see a little bit of that pattern, but remember the decal that we're going to use also has the floral in it, so it'll kind of tie everything together. All right, so once I was done glittering, I sealed all of my glitter with some clear spray from Rust-Oleum. I did two coats of that, and then I added two coats of epoxy to my tumbler. Don't pay attention to how rocky this 40 ounce skinny looks on my turner. It ended up being fine. Um, I'm using the Flynn Sisters Fast Curing Epoxy. So in between my epoxy coats, I waited about four to five hours. It's been pretty warm here, so I used the weather to my advantage and I didn't have to wait as long in between coats. But depending on the epoxy you're using, you might have to wait a longer time or a shorter time. So after my epoxy was all cured, I was ready to go in and do all of my sanding and decal work and all of that. We're going to start with with our self-love tumbler. Now on this one, I decided to not do any glitter. I went back and forth on the idea of maybe matting this tumbler, but this epoxy is so shiny and once it was done, I was like, I cannot mat this. So I ended up keeping it shiny, but still with no glitter. So for the decals, we're going to use this really pretty hand letter decal. This is from Beck McCormick. It says Faith Over Fear. And I cut it out in this really pretty champagne matte chrome vinyl. This is from Tech Rat Craft. And I'm gonna put it up kind of on the top of the tumbler where there's a little break in the florals and then I decided that I wanted to add some leopard spots too. I wanted to bring a little bit more of that champagne gold out, add a little bit more detail to the tumbler and kind of like bring a little bit of brightness. So I just cut these spots out and as you can see I'm just going to place them randomly all over the cup kind of within those really dark spaces on the tumbler just making sure I don't add too many and overwhelm the florals. Then I moved into our Courage Tumbler, and for this one, we're going to add some vinyl striping and the decal that coordinates with the vinyl from this pack. For the striping, I'm using Rose Gold Texture Metallic Vinyl from TechGraph Craft. I cut these stripes at 0.12 inches wide I believe and I always make them 11 and a half inches long and I'm just going to follow those lines that we already have on the tumbler. I am leaving a little bit of overlap at the bottom because I really want a nice intersection between this diagonal line and the side striping. So once I lay that diagonal line down I'm going to use those existing lines as a guide to cut off the excess and really give us a very nice point at either of those two ends. I also added another striping line down at the very bottom of the cup where the vinyl and the glitter on the bottom meet just to finish that off kind of nicely. And then I also cut a circle out of that leftover pattern vinyl that we had. I cut this at 2.3 inches wide for this 30 ounce skinny and I'm going to place that right in the middle of that bottom portion of the tumbler. Now I did sand the very bottom of my cup before I put that pattern vinyl circle on there but that's the only place on the cup I sanded. I did not sand this glitter section because the the decal we're going to use is a clear decal printed with white ink so all of those clear sections under epoxy would not shine up if you had some dull like sanding marks or scuff marks or anything on there so you really want a smooth and epoxied shiny surface before you put these decals down so you can either do another coat of epoxy you can sand and then go in with another coat of epoxy or do whatever you need to do to make it smooth and shiny before your decal. So I cut this decal out. This says find your courage and it matches the florals in the courage pattern, of course. And I'm going to measure just to make sure that it's centered in this space. And then I'm gonna use the hinge method to apply the decal to this section of the tumbler.
So there's our Courage Cup. After I epoxy this, I will do a full round of sanding on that and then add the final coat. And now we're moving into our Bloom mug. Now this was the only one that really required a lot of sanding before I added the main decal on. So I did a full round of sanding on the body of the tumbler and then I added a few more vinyl details to this to bring that floral out just a little bit more because we covered it with so much glitter. So I cut a circle out for the bottom of the cup just like we did on the last one. The size of this circle was 2.6 inches in width I believe and then I also cut out a strip to apply to the handle. I made this about 8 inches long which is longer than you'll need and point seven inches wide. This strip is about 0.75. I think it's a three quarter inch handle. So I made it a little smaller so I wouldn't have any overlap like on the edges of the handle. I added another coat of epoxy to this tumbler before I was able to put the decal on. And while that's spinning, I'm gonna do our next tumbler. This is the Empowered Women Empower Vinyl. So I sanded down the top rim of the cup really, really well. And now I'm gonna finish off the bottom and the top rim of the cup. When I did my sanding, I kind of messed up the vinyl a little bit. So it was a little kind of like choppy and rough looking. So I'm gonna tape that off just like a slight little bit. You can see it's just a tiny bit, but I wanna cover up all of that messy kind of sanded look. So I'm going to do that on the top rim of the cup and then I'm going to tape off the bottom as well so that we can paint the very bottom of the cup and kind of have a nice continuous line down to that bottom rim. I'm just using flat black spray paint from Rust-Oleum. Let it completely dry. I waited about maybe 45 minutes. And now I'm going to add my striping. I'm using this Onyx textured metallic vinyl. This is from Cricut. And I'm going to lay that down the side seams of the cup. And then I'm also going to bring it around the bottom so that everything is really nicely striped out and just has a really good finished look to it. We're going to use the coordinating decal for this on this tumbler as well. So this one says empowered women, empower women, which I think is so true. So I'm gonna secure it onto the cup with a piece of tape you can see there up at the top while I measure and make sure that it is centered in the cup area. And once I know that it's in the place I want it to be, I'm gonna put another piece of tape on one side. And again, I'm gonna use the hinge method to secure the decal to the tumbler. So I'll pull it back, cut about half of the backing away, and then I'll use my vinyl squeegee to push the rest of the decal onto the cup. And now finally, we're back to our bloom tumbler. We're gonna add the decal to this one as well. I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna put it up on that glitter section and I'm gonna use the hinge method to apply it. I'm really glad that this decal is shaped the way it is and like has the flowers as prominently displayed as it does because it made the tumbler look a whole lot better since I covered half the vinyl with the glitter. So I was really happy with that. So once I've got all of the decals on the tumblers, I decided not to do a decal or anything at all to the 40 ounce skinny mug with the marvelous pattern on it. I just, it was so pretty and I just thought it was really elegant just on its own. So I just added final coats to that. And once I had all the decals on, I added one coat of epoxy, did a full round of sanding on everything, and then went in with my final coat of epoxy. So now we are all all done. So here are the final results for all five of these vinyl patterns and decals. I am so happy with how these turned out. This pack is so beautiful, so classy, and so elegant. So we'll go through each of these one by one. I want to show them to you. So this is the Bloom mug that we just saw. I'm really happy that I decided to just go with this and improvise and just let it be what it is. I think it really turned out to be still a beautiful mug, even though you can only see a little bit of the main vinyl, but it's okay. I really like it. And the next one is our non-glitter tumbler. This one is my favorite. I'll admit, I didn't know that it was going to be when I was working on it, but once it was done, I just really fell in love with it. So there's that one. And then we have our Empowered Women Empower Women one. Here is what the decal looks like. You can see that those edges just completely disappear under epoxy. And there's the pattern. Also, side note, how freaking shiny is this epoxy, you guys? I cannot get over it. <laughs> and then next, we've got our Find Your Courage diagonal split vinyl wrap thing. I'm really, really happy with this one. Like I said, you cannot find the seam. I don't even know what side the seam is on, to be honest with you. 
So definitely happy with that. And then finally, we have our big boy, our 40 ounce skinny mug. Now my mom, Manny, has already made a claim on this and she made me put a little bit of glitter into my epoxy in the coat before the final coat. So I added just a little bit of bright into my epoxy to give it a little bit of sparkle. Now, if you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Let me know what your favorite is down below in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, love you. Bye.